but now pff, we've got to go do the do the thing do the thing that i'm that i'm dreading and excited for and oops no 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 downtown we go do the thing <laughs> it's like i was saying do the thing that i'm dreading and excited for and head over to new reno to start proper so let's do that whoa so now heading to new reno yeah here we go it's about to get real exciting we're got we're about to get a whole lot of icons around new reno as well gotta wait till daytime even though the, the city is naturally dark we'll start in virgin street so when we first came to new reno i got the whole the whole elevator pitch of the families and stuff like that. It, it's more than an elevator pitch. It's several paragraphs, actually, from Jules. Um, not going to do that again, <laughs> because we already got more. Con we already got context on on the families and what they do. But just for a quick recap, for those of you who need a little bit of a bit of a reminder or something like that, New Reno is kind of operated by four separate crime families. You have the Mordinos, which own the Desperado Casino and also control the uh, the Jet, and also, by extension, have control of Myron, the creator of Jet. Then, on 2nd Street, we're going to go up to 2nd Street really quick, because we're going to do stuff here anyway. Um, on 2nd Street, we have uh, the Shark Club, which is where Mr. Bishop resides the bishop family um i think they're more along the lines of like political political intrigue and uh espionage and that kind of that kind of thing or or making agreements underhanded agreements with different factions to gain control of the area um by means of blackmail and whatnot this is actually going to be our first stop but i got to go over the other families first uh louis salvatore the Salvatore family over here, across the way from the Shark Club, they uh, have something called Lightbringers. They have the, uh, when it comes to firepower, they are, you know, up there in the in the threat of being disintegrated and or sliced in half by the kind of fire, firepower that they wield. Um, and who provides that firepower? I mean, you can guess, but we'll go over that later. Uh, when we start working for them, uh, but also over here, I'm not going to go over here, but but family right uh, controls the alcohol um, and they are legitimately a family rather than just, you know, a bunch of people who call themselves a family like they are genetically a family um, like everybody's related. But they control the alcohol of the area. So now now that, that recaps out of the way, we're going to become a prize fighter so we can gain some favor with the people of New Reno and gain some notoriety in the area. So let's speak to this gentleman right here. He studies you as you walk up and takes a toothpick out of his mouth. Yeah, what do you want, big guy? Who are you? He says, what? You ain't heard of me, Stuart? Stuart Little? Biggest agent in all New Reno? Someone's done you a disservice not telling you about me, pal. Sticks toothpick back in mouth, chews on it. Got a name? I'm Kato. Looking to box. Can you help me out? He says, hmm, I'll give you a chance, but I ain't promising anything. I'm doing you a favor taking some unknown under my wing. Might take us half the winnings. No arguments. Cut your take down to 25%. We have a deal. He says, no dice. 50-50 or nothing. If you don't like that, walk. Did I say 25-75? I meant 50-50. We'll split the profit right down the middle. No problems here. He says, all right. He looks me over. You're going to need a name. You know, a handle. Something that sounds tough. Mean. Like Cato the Hurricane. Cato the Brawler. You know? And now we have a lot of choices to go through, so I'm just going to pick one here. Well, I'm not a very original guy, so I think punchy fits pretty well. I've used the term punchy a lot to describe my character, so punchy it is. That took a long time to, to decide this. He nods. Punchy. Punchy. Not bad. Not bad. It fits. Nods at the ring. Shall we get to it then? You ready? Let's do it. We're already on to our first match. Here we go. It shifts over to nighttime, and we have a lovely announcer, as well as a, a lady walking around telling us what round it is. He says, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tonight's match is brought to you by Rotgut. When you absolutely have to have something to drink, 
And it's something, something. Choose the wrong gut. We skipped it. In this corner, the challenger, weighing at 185 pounds, fresh from the wasteland, and new to New Reno, Punchy. And in this corner, weighing in 181 pounds, you know him, you love him, Jock. So without further ado, let's get ready to beat some A's. I have sequence on this guy. <laughs> uh, so, since I have sequence on him, I'm going to let him come to me. With a massive AC boost. So, there's no really rules to the boxing in Fallout 2. So, I can still punch dudes in groins and still win that way. So, obviously... That's what we're gonna do. And the it looks like the lighting is perfect. Like I can wow. Boxer was critically hitting the groin for six hit points. Okay. Groin again. Yes, yes. And then I move away. He's only gonna get a couple shots on me. Cause I'll be dancing around him. Like some sort of ballerina. There we go. <laughs> TKO. <laughs> uh, end turn? I think that, that counts as a... Yep, there we go. Knockout. And the winner is... By means of knockout... Punchy! That's me. That's my name. I did it. <laughs> First round's done. Stuart is smiling like a jackal. Dang fine performance up there, Punchy. You're doing all right. Feeling all right? Let me know when you're ready for your next match. Let me rest a little, and then I'll be ready. It's very important to save in between matches, because they can do the same to you. They are trained boxer NPCs. I had to move some saves around, too. Let's start up the next match. Stuart nods as you approach. Hey, Punchy, what's up? Ready to get back in the ring? I'm ready to rumble. All right, then. Let's get this circus on the road, he says. Okay. So, one of the things that I didn't get, and you can actually get him... Um, well, I can't even move my mouse. Uh, to the, to the northwestish, to the upper left, is the, the Shark Club. And that's where the, the reigning champion of the boxing ring uh, resides in the basement of, of the Shark Club. But there's a locker down there that has plated boxing gloves in it that could give me a, a definite advantage if I went and grabbed them. Because at, at a certain point, I'm going to start doing very little damage or no damage. Oh, in this corner, it's me. In this corner, weighing in at 177 pounds. You know him, you love him. Pete McKinley. There we go. Uh, but I'm going to start doing zeros if I'm not critting. So this might be really interesting or this might be just fine we might be just fine because if i if i get a proper crit on the groin um chances are pretty high that i'll get a get a knockout on them um not a technical knockout the last round i was confusing it with killing someone <laughs> which i've done before uh in the boxing ring too at two punches two punches Boxer was critically hitting the groin for one hit point, and without protection, he falls over, groaning in agony. I may have just won the round. Nope. Okay, this one, this one's got some, this one's got some punch to him. This one's got some spice. He had some hot sauce rubbed in his eyes or something before, like he, he snorted some hot sauce. There we go, snorted some hot sauce before he started fighting. Okay, we knocked him down again. <laughs> Boxer is quickly hitting the groin for two hit points. He mumbles, Mother! Before his eyes roll in the back of his head. I think that's a knockout. Yep. <laughs> I like how it brings them back in, just on the floor. <laughs> for announcing the winner as well. And the winner is... By means of knockout... Punchy! It's me again. Good job, me. Way to go, me. Stuart is smiling like a jackal. Dang, fine performance up there, Punchy. You're doing all right. Feeling all right? Yeah, okay. We're on to the next one. So let me rest. And then speak to him again. I'm ready to rumble. He says, all right, then. Let's get the circus on the road. 
I've been getting experience for each of these fights to progressively more. So I got 500 for the first one, 750 for the previous one, and I think it's going to be 1,000 for this one? If, if, the, if the pattern is going to make sense? Tonight's match is brought to you by... We're going to find out. The Cat's Paw. When you have got that itch that need you need to scratch. Man, I didn't read that right. Head to the Cat's Paw. Speaking of Cat's Paw, I need to get another magazine. Like, one more magazine, and then I can turn them into Miss Kitty. Uh, so they, they're they introducing me? Yep. And in this corner, weighing him at 189 pounds, you know if you love him, Evan Hollyfeld. Hollyfeld. So without further ado... Let's get ready to beat some aces! I don't know why I say it that way. Makes it sound like I can, I can get away with it better. Super nuclear tornado fist! Oh, he, he has... He announces his moves. <laughs> We're at 91 chance to hit, or 91% chance to hit. So Boxer was hitting the groin for no damage. So basically, I have a feeling... Yeah, I, I still critically hit him. My luck is 10. Like, <laughs> and the, the chance... The crit chance is raised because I am punching him in the groin. Was critically hitting the groin for no damage. Let me punch him again. Groin for no damage. Okay, well, let's see if it worked. Nope. He's still up. You got nothing! You're a loser! Boxer's critically hitting the groin for six hit points, and he's not wearing a cup either. <laughs> Come on! Alright, now I run away. We've got this. It's starting to hurt a little bit. There we go. Uh, collapses like a rag. I'm gonna guess that's code for knockout. Yep. Did it! Third round. And the winner is... By means of knockout, it's me, isn't it? It's like, it's like, it's like rigging the lottery. Oh, I'm so surprised. Oh my goodness. I spent my life becoming a master pugilist. <laughs> well, you know, my, my, my tri temple of trials led me to this point. Let me wrestle little Stuart. Uh, defeated the third challenger. Okay, so the fourth challenger might be the Masticator. So we'll rest really quick. And we saved. Last round. Ready to get back in the ring? I'm ready. All right, then. Let's get the circus on the road. Follow him. I'm hoping I can knock this out on one episode. I think... <laughs> knock it out. <laughs> Knocking it out. Man, what's the title? What's the working title for this? Knock this episode out. Knockout of an episode. An episode of knockouts. Knockout by groin punch. Punch groin KO. I'm not feeling very original today. Come to Dorito Arms. They're promoting Dorito Arms. <laughs> Here I am. It is me, Punchy. Is is 180. Ah, there he is, in this corner, weighing in at 194 pounds. You know, we love him. The Masticator! It's, uh, you know, Mike Tyson. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get ready to beat some ice! Okay. So I'm gonna move over here. And I'm gonna wait. Come here, Masticator! Let's see how well I do. Let's see if I, I get a knockout in the first turn. Nope. No damage. Bam. <laughs> I ain't one punch man. I'm two punch man. I think I just won. Yeah. <laughs> it was a little anticlimactic, because if, you, if you're in the round long enough, um, the Masticator will bite your ear off, and you'll have it in your inventory as an item. But we're too good at punching for the groin. 
so I won. <laughs> I'm the champion! This is looking good, fella. You've defeated the Masticator! You gained 2,500 experience points. How close are we to a level? We're a ways. <laughs> like eight... No. 8,000? 7,500 or so. If I'm doing math right. I don't usually do math right. You dropped that son of a biscuit like a bad habit. Good job. Looking good, fella. Okay. Well, that's it. We did it. We successfully became a champion. We could look at the... There we go. Champion. Or, sorry, prize fighter. Prize fighter is the, is the karma title that you get for, you know doing the thing. You are the heavyweight champion of the northern of Northern California. You have gained fame, respect, the love of thousands, and a bonus to your toughness and unarmed skill. Oh! I forgot that my toughness and armed goes up. That's cool. So my unarmed increased. I don't know. I don't know what it was when we first started. And then my toughness? I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> but again... Crits kind of cut through it completely. All right. So now we can work with Family Bishop. The goal here is to become made man with all of the new do all of the new Reno families. Wow. That's how this recording is going to be. I'm going to say things and they're going to come out a garbled mess. I'm going to show you the, the the basement here really quick. So this is where they kept the masticator. This was I'm guessing uh Mr. Bishop's <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bishop's prize fighter. Um, I don't think you can use any of the exercise equipment in here. Oh, punching bag. Might be able to use it. At 130 right now. Punching bag. Nope. Didn't do anything. Uh, but I believe the punching bags in the Sierra Army Depot can raise your unarmed skill. So I wanted to show you in here. The plated boxing gloves, which we don't need now. Um, it says somebody accidentally slipped metal plates into these boxing gloves. It could technically be considered cheating, but you prefer to think of it as an increased opportunity to dispense bone crunching damage. Um, and I'll show it to you really quick. Like, like the, the boxing gloves and the plated boxing gloves, they're not, you know, you get double damage out of the plated ones. There might be something on top of that that we don't know about. <laughs> they weigh twice as much too. But, um, it was it was more a means to get KO damage racked up or get a get a KO on a on a target. You saw it. Why am I explaining it? Oh, there's the <laughs> performance enhancing drugs as well as plated gloves in here. But I defeated the masquerader. I didn't kill a single boxer, which is nice. I'm glad I I'm glad I didn't. Is still like the one carrying stuff. I'm going to ask him to carry those boxing gloves. Um, somebody, if you remember way back, we got a briefcase to deliver to Mr. Bishop from Thomas Moore in Vault City. And now we can actually deliver that because we are in New Reno and we are in Mr. Bishop's casino. Now we just have to see him. This is the point where great care must be taken. Because uh, you know how you run to that individual in New Reno, or sorry, New Vegas, who's uh, running away from Mr. Bishop. Uh, he's, he's escaping Mr. Bishop's eye because he maybe perhaps plowed Mr. Bishop's daughter. Here's Mr. Bishop's daughter right here. Um, and it's, and it's kind of a, it's, it's an Easter egg, basically, because you can, like, she attempts to seduce you as soon as you start talking to her, just like his wife also does. However, if that's how you get upstairs to where Mr. Bishop is, he will become hostile immediately and kind of ruin your chances of working with him, unless you just reload after being curious. And, and Angela's even saying, Angela is his daughter's name, um, you talk to me now. So let's talk to her just to just to turn her down. She says, well, well, punchy. I heard about your exploits in the ring. Very impressive. 
I think you're just the person to help me with this problem I have. What problem is that? She says, see, I have this load of premium jet in my room, and I can't take it all by myself. Oh? She says, not only that, but when I take jet, I get all wild, and I can barely control myself. I need someone who knows how to take charge to make sure I don't do anything foolish. No, I don't think so. I better be going. She says, you knew or something? I'm Angela Bishop. My dad is the head of Family Bishop. You better do what I say, and I see her coming with me now. You're right. Your dad is head of Family Bishop. That's why we're not going anywhere. <laughs> she replies, you wish you hadn't turned me down. Daddy's going to start hearing all sorts of things about you soon. Just you wait. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Talk to the hand. Special thanks to my Wasteland Legends, Sven and David Hoover, and thanks to the rest of my patrons on screen now. You can catch future episodes of this playthrough on Wednesdays and Fridays, noon and 10 a.m. Pacific. Thanks for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander the wasteland like you own it.